Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another reading vlog. I'm really excited about this one. One, because it's been a minute since I have done one. I've been in the worst reading slump ever. But two, I started this book last night and I am pretty sure it's a five-star read. I'm really excited to share it and talk about it with you because I am truly obsessed with this story right now. But anyways, I just made some breakfast. It looks really scary, but it is delicious. I'm obsessed with these little flavor bomb tomatoes. They're so good. Mm. Anyways, let me show you the book. So this is the book Adelaide. This was one of my book of the month picks. I didn't really know what to expect going into this story, just that it was kind of like a twisted love story. Like 500 days of summer in that aspect, you know what I mean? When I started this, I literally could not put it down. I love her writing style. I just absolutely adore the story. There are a lot of parts in this book that are difficult or triggering to read, but the gist of the book is that the main character, Adelaide, has kind of had a struggle with relationships. Her first high school boyfriend did not treat her very well, and she went through a lot of really difficult things in that relationship. And so when she got to her adult years and years in college, it was not something that she was really interested in seeking out. But eventually she starts dabbling in the dating apps and she just kind of ends up with like a slew of one night stands. At first, not purposely, she was really looking for something and then she figured out that she didn't want to feel the way she felt when all of these guys ghosted her, so she would just always ghost first. Anyways, she falls into something with this guy, Rory, and it is everything that she ever dreamed of, except when it's not. They go through a series of ups and downs, really, really high highs and really, really low lows, where he is ignoring her for days on end, not responding to texts. He doesn't really acknowledge them in a relationship most of the time and she just kind of feels like she's hanging on by a thread here but she wants so badly to hold on to that magical feeling when the highs are high i think a good amount of us can relate to relationships like that always feeling like maybe you're putting in a little bit more effort like this totally reminded me of a boyfriend that i had in high school like to a T. So it's definitely rough to read, but the Rory guy ends up going through a crazy tragedy and it just really pushes the relationship to a breaking point. So that is pretty much where I'm at in this book and I am eager to kind of see how this pans out because the way the book starts, it starts after this rocky relationship and things aren't looking so good. So I'm trying to figure out how we ended up in this place and what happens and yeah i just really really love this story even if it's sad there is beauty in sadness sometimes anyways this is a pretty short read i am on 206 207 ish right now and it's a little bit under 300 pages so almost done with this one i'm gonna knock it out this afternoon because i just need the closure so gonna hop into it and finish my runny eggs. <laughs> I need a minute to process this before I tell you my thoughts. That book kind of destroyed me, but in a good way. Here's the thing. The way that the book ended is exactly how I predicted it would end and hoped that it would end. And I really, really like how it ended. There's just so many things that kind of disrupt this path that Adelaide is on and so many things that she goes through that I just like so deeply deeply resonate with. I just felt the story so deeply in my bones and I am obsessed. This is 
five stars for me. This was incredible. And I am so excited to follow Genevieve Wheeler uh, because I can't wait to read what she comes up with next. <laughs> like I said, I kind of didn't really have any expectations when I started this book. I just, I liked the cover. It was cute, simple, pretty. And I was like, all right, I, I do prefer to go into books a little bit more blind most of the times. And this one was just so incredible. It exceeded any expectations. I'm also proud of myself for not sobbing. My eyes were like getting so misty. I was like, no, we're not doing this because I have mascara and everything on and I don't want to deal with that. This was a tough one, but so so good it just makes you feel everything i'm begging you guys to read this right now i have no idea what to start next or how i'm even going to read something after this okay i think my next pick is ghost by dolly alderton this one just seems like a good one to piggyback off of adelaide i also like that the covers are similar-ish not really but pink and flowers and whatever this one is also pretty short under 300 pages so it should be an easy read but it sounds kind of similar in the sense that she gets into a relationship and then he goes to her this is the one that i've wanted to read for some time now so i am definitely looking forward to this i got a little cucumber snack i did some with like cream cheese and everything but the bagel seasoning and then these are just lime and like uh chili flakes but it is 3 p.m right now i'm about to get started on ghosts morning you guys i have an update on ghosts i'm actually i'm i want to say i'm almost done but i'm a little bit over halfway right now i'm enjoying it i'm on page 171 and basically this whole book the main character she's 32 she hasn't had or been in a relationship in a few years with her long-term ex-boyfriend so she decided she's going to dip her toe into the dating world via dating apps and her first date on this app goes extremely well she is starting to fall for this guy they've gone on several dates and it's kind of like they're in a relationship and then all of a sudden he goes to her obviously that is not a spoiler that is quite literally what the book is about and it is written on the back of the book also throughout this book she is dealing with her father who has recently kind of been diagnosed with dementia and it's still early stages but it is absolutely heartbreaking and i cannot even imagine being in that position and watching this person that you love and that you know so extremely well turn into a completely different person brain things like that really freak me out and i have luckily knock on wood never had to deal with that or see that firsthand but just reading about it it just absolutely crushes my heart so there's that intertwined in this book and like i said it's definitely a slow start it took me 80 ish pages to really like get into the story i would say maybe a little bit more than that at first i honestly wasn't really vibing with the main character nina as i get further in the book i am enjoying her humor a bit more so so far so good i will keep you guys updated So I finally finished Ghost and I actually started this one last night. So I'll tell you guys about that as well. But I actually ended up liking this a lot more than I thought I was going to, especially at the beginning of this book. I wasn't completely sold. The character development in this book is really 
well written and I thought that it was just insanely relatable in the way that the main character is 32 I'm not quite there yet but I feel like all of my friends and people from high school are all like married and having babies and it's just like this total disconnect almost like when those friends start having babies that friendship just doesn't work because people with babies want to hang out with other people with babies you know what i mean so that was insanely relatable and i definitely cried a few times in this book mostly because nina's dad and his dementia that is just so hard to read and although i can't really relate to this strange dating world and this world of ghosting and dating apps and all of that craziness i just oh my gosh my heart breaks because i can't imagine feeling such a deep connection to someone and then just like out of the blue they're gone there are parts of this book that are just completely heartbreaking but i i enjoyed it i liked how it ended and i really liked the best friend she's totally insane but so funny so this one i would definitely give four stars to i thought it was a really good commentary on life in i guess your 30s but also your mid-20s those relationships and yeah, really, really good read. So I was on a roll with my sad books and I decided to finally pick up The Most Precious Substance on Earth. This has been sitting on my shelf for a while and I thought that this would be the ultimate sad read because in the little inside jacket, it says Nina spends her spare time reading Beowulf and flirting with an internet predator. She tells no one when her best friend begins to pull away or when her crush on her English teacher intensifies. And she won't speak of the incident in high school that changes the course of her life. From that quick description, I was kind of expecting something not quite as intense as my dark Vanessa, but along those lines. And this is more of like a character study. It is not a book with a plot. It's more just how parts of your past dictate your future and i do enjoy that commentary i will say that there are parts of this book that are a little bit slow that kind of go on a little bit longer than necessary and i end up skimming also the triggering part of this book so far i'm only like a little bit over halfway right now it happens off page so you don't have to worry about reading too in depth like again my dark vanessa it's definitely not what i expected it to be when i picked out this book but it is interesting and there's so many like references to 90s nostalgia like <laughs> they're like eating dunkaroos and stuff it's really cute in that aspect also the main character in this book is nina and the main character in this book was also nina so lots of ninas to keep track of but there are a lot of pieces of the main character that are deeply relatable one being how she just stays so quiet she doesn't really speak up for herself that is one thing that i am really really bad about i always try to avoid uncomfortable confrontations and things and i'm just like hoping for the best i think this book is kind of hinting that parts of her childhood had made her keep quiet and keep to herself so i don't know it's interesting but i'm not obsessed with this book and i am on page 159 i have like 100 pages left so i don't know this might just be like one of those books that you're like i appreciate it for what it is but it's not like a favorite you know Okay, I finally finished this book, you guys, and it took me like three days, which is a lot longer than I had anticipated it to be. This book is only like 250 pages, so it really should not have taken me that long, but there were just so many slow parts of this book where I just kept picking it up and putting it down and just reading in such small <laughs> increments. This book kind of reads like a memoir. It's like a lot of little short stories about the main character Nina's life. And a lot of them, I just didn't feel like there was any point in telling me about it. And on the inside cover, it just sounds like this one thing that happened in her childhood that was extremely traumatizing. 
is going to be talked about a little bit more and like affect her life more but i didn't really feel that throughout the book because the thing happens off page so you don't get like details which is totally fine i don't need details of that but they don't even really mention it again until the very last chapter and it's like so brief i can see how that thing would have affected her like that's why she's so quiet and reserved and like maybe that's what it's trying to say but maybe it's just me maybe i didn't like read deep enough into this book i didn't absorb it fully i don't know but it wasn't bad it just wasn't what i was in the mood for right now i did really like the main character's parents in this book they are so funny i don't think that this is one that i would recommend it's not that i would be like no that book sucks so like don't read it but it's also not like oh my gosh it was such a good read go check it out it's just kind of meh i don't know it's it's a coming of age it's fiction i don't really know how else to describe this book but it was fine i think i would give it three stars it just was not what i expected it to be it does match my sweatshirt today though so that's that's something anyways that is all that i have for you guys this week if you have read any amazing sad books lately let me know i'm like in the mood for just sad like heartbreaking stories so let me know what to read next and i will see you guys soon in another reading vlog bye